welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm the author of several uh, Tudor history books and I'm here to share On This Day in Tudor History events uh, with you for the rest of 2019 and perhaps beyond. We'll see how we go. Okay, today I'm taking you back to 1589, which is in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. On this day in Tudor history, the 4th of April 1589, scholar and noblewoman Mildred Sissel, who was born Mildred Cook, um, she was Lady Burley, died at Sissel House in the Strand in London. Now, Mildred was the wife of William Sissel, 1st Baron Burley, who was, of course, Queen Elizabeth I's right-hand man, her main advisor. And Mildred was married to him, and Mildred was about 63 when she died in 1589. I'm going to share with you some facts about Mildred. I find her a fascinating uh, woman. There are quite a few of these Tudor women who are just unusual for their... Um, for, for their accomplishments, for their intelligence, uh, for their level of education, and Mildred is one of those, and I just find her fascinating. So, Mildred was the eldest of nine children born to Sir Anthony Cook and his wife Anne Fitzwilliam. Anthony Cook was a humanist, and he was a scholar, and he believed in providing his five daughters with the same classical education that his sons received. And so he was quite unusual for doing that. And another man that was like that was um, Thomas Boleyn, uh, father of Queen Anne Boleyn. Cook was a scholar and so taught Mildred himself at home, their home being uh, Gidea Hall in Essex. Um, Anthony Cook was also a very keen reformer, and by that I mean he was he embraced the reformed faith, the uh, you know the faith that would eventually become known as Protestantism. On the twenty first of December, fifteen forty five. Mildred married William Cecil. Um, she was his second wife and she helped to bring up um, her stepson Thomas Cecil. So he was from uh, William Cecil's um, first um, marriage. And Mildred and William went on to have five children of their own, although sadly Mildred outlived all but one of them. The one that did survive her was Robert Cecil, first Earl of Salisbury, a man who would go on to serve as Secretary of State to both Queen Elizabeth I and King James I. So a man that followed in his father's footsteps. Now Mildred was very influential and we're talking about a time where, you know, women um, did not have the same standing as we hope they have today. Um, you know, they were supposed to be not as important and, as men. But she was actually very influential and she acted as a sort of intermediary between petitioners and her husband. So people that wanted William Sissel's sort of help would go to Mildred uh, to see if she could kind of intercede uh, for them. So she acted as... Um, this intermediary with really important people, people such as William Maitland um, and some of the other Scottish leaders um, who corresponded with her personally instead of just her husband when they were negotiating the Treaty of Edinburgh. Mildred was fluent in French, Greek and Latin and she built up a huge library of Greek and Latin works these included texts on medicine, religion, literature um, and history. So she had this extensive library of these uh, very uh, prestigious uh, texts. Towards the end of her life, um, she, she became this philanthropist and started donating the books that she'd built up in her collection to educational institutions such as Christ Church, Oxford, St John's College, um, Oxford, and also Westminster School. 
and today we still have 30 books that are inscribed with Mildred's name. So we still have 30 books from her huge collection left surviving today. Mildred and William Sissel appear to have had a very happy marriage. Mildred wrote of her everlasting comfort, living with this noble man in divine love and charity. And when she died in 1589, in the eulogy that he wrote for her, Burley, William Cecil, described her as dearest above all and far beyond the race of womankind. And when he arranged her very lavish funeral, he said that it was a testimony of my hearty love, which I did bear her, with whom I lived in the state of matrimony 40 and two years, continually without any unkindness. And in a letter to their son, Robert, Cecil wrote of the virtuous inclinations of thy matchless mother, by whose tender and godly care thy infancy was governed, together with thy education under so zealous and excellent a tutor. So, I mean, you could say, well, he's just writing nice things about her because she died. But they seem to have had a real meeting of minds and to have had a very happy marriage. They both respected each other and loved each other. Now, Mildred was laid to rest with her daughter and Countess of Oxford in St Nicholas's Chapel in Westminster Abbey. And there's a 20, 24 foot high, I think it is, um, monument, and that is attributed to sculptor Cornelius Cure. I'll give you a link because I can't share photos in this video because they're copyright of Westminster Abbey, but I will give you a link to Westminster Abbey's page on uh, Mildred and Anne's monument because uh, it's, it's amazing to see and you can see photos of it and also read all of the inscriptions that are on the monument to Mildred. But here is one inscription which was originally written in Latin but I'll read you it in English. Mildred, firstborn daughter of the noble Lord Anthony Cook, knight, a man of virtue and distinguished learning, a noble Mykenus to all men of letters, her mother was the Lady Anne, daughter of Lord William Fitzwilliam, knight, celebrated and high-born because of her parents' ancient pedigree, tracing its descent from many of the noble families of the realm. She was no less famed sorry, and exceedingly praised by all the learned for her erudition combined with her steadfast profession of the Christian faith and her singular knowledge of the Greek and Latin tongues which knowledge she received solely at the hands of her father, who instructed her. She became, in her twentieth year, the wife of Lord William Cecil, Lord of Burley, and afterwards, by reason of her husband's being ennobled with the title of Baron of the Realm, she was created Baroness of Burley, and bore him many children, but three only who attained maturity, that is Anne, Robert and Elizabeth. So I'll give you a link in the description uh, below to Westminster Abbey's page on Mildred and Anne's monument so that you can see the beautiful monument for yourself. Um, but I hope that I've shared with you um, enough to sort of pique your interest in this uh, fascinating uh, Tudor woman who died on this day um, in Tudor history, the 4th of April 1589, Mildred Sissel, Lady Burley. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, another On This Day in Tudor History event. Please do consider subscribing to this channel by just clicking there. And you can, of course, hit the bell to be notified um, of new videos going live. Anyway, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>